I'm going to give you an analogy to help you understand what I'm trying to get at. I haven't made my point yet. Somebody was out at sea and their ship hit a rock and the ship sank. And this guy is holding on to a piece of wood. And he's out in sea. And he's making dua to Allah. Now at that point, you can make two duas. Ya Allah, transport me from here to an island immediately. Make the rain stop, make the storm stop. Or he could say, Ya Allah, give me the strength to overcome this difficulty. Now when he makes dua, Ya Allah, send me a helicopter right away. Pick me up into the sky and get me to an island. And he makes dua over and over, helicopter, helicopter, helicopter. And no helicopter came. And then he says, Allah didn't even send a helicopter. I made so much dua for, for one. That's not fair. I'm, forget it, I'm not making dua anymore. In other words, he's making dua, or for example, he wants the, 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 the ocean to turn into land. Ya Allah, just, you have the power to change anything into anything. You made all of this, so you could just convert this ocean into a land right now. So, I mean, you turned Ibrahim salam's fire and you made it cool, so you can do that for me. And it doesn't turn, it's still the ocean. And you're still drowning slowly, you know? The point I'm trying to make is oftentimes we think the purpose of dua is to change the reality around us. We focus on changing the reality around us. But if you study the duas in the Quran, and the majority of the duas in the sunnah carefully, you'll notice that the change actually you're asking for is a change in yourself. Ya Allah, I'm in a difficult test. Give me the ability to change the test. It's just I'll give you a simpler example. Some student is about to go take an exam. You can make two kinds of du'as. You can make the du'a, Ya Allah, give me the ability to understand the subject matter, let me concentrate, you know, Ya Allah, uh, give me the ability to not be nervous while I'm taking the test, let me not get lazy. You du'as about yourself, or Ya Allah, make this, I know it's a medical school exam, but yeah, convert it, convert it into a second grade math exam for me, so I don't have to have this problem. Either you want to change reality, or you want to empower yourself. For most, for people that are weak in their faith, they don't think about empowering or changing themselves. They just want to change what? Reality around them. And they keep asking Allah to change the reality around them, and does it change? No. And when it doesn't change, they blame Allah. They turn to Allah and say, how come you didn't change the world around me? How come you didn't turn everything you know, on a silver platter for me? You want reality to submit to you, you truly have to learn first to submit to Allah. <laughs> and you don't come to Allah when you need something. You don't just come to Allah when there's a problem. You come to Allah all the time. You come, you, you're submissive before Allah constantly. Until that attitude is developed. And by the way, there will be a time when reality will submit around us. And that time is actually when we meet with Allah. Lahum ma yasha'un. They're going to have whatever they want. The problem is we want whatever we want right now. <laughs> Allah says, I'll give you that. Right now, you're going to experience some times of good and other times of test. And the only reason He gives you a test, the only reason He gives you a test is because He wants you to pass so you can qualify for that Jannah. He wants you to go through these trials because they will bring you closer to Him.